Um, and uh, we are here to talk about the crisis. Let's start with the crisis in Europe mm -hmm. and its impact in the global market and right. in Turkey, especially in Turkey. Right. Um, do you think the October 26, the delay and the second part uh, is going to solve uh, the problem? Well, we have to hope. It's awfully important that Europe gets this right because so much hangs, hangs in the balance for, for Europe itself, but for Turkey, uh, for the United States, for the whole global economy. After all, the EU taken together is the largest single uh, economic entity in, in the world. And already there are lots of concerns about the future of Europe, about the possible recession spreading in Europe, and about a crisis that needs to be avoided. How about the future of Turkey in this picture? Well, Turkey is tied in with Europe mm -hmm. in a significant way, given the trade volumes there and uh, given the, uh, the, the concerns in the markets. If Europe doesn't find an answer, mm -hmm. there'll be repercussions for, for everybody. So we all have a big stake in the leaders of Europe uh, finding the answers, and I'm confident they will. Uh, this goes back a long way, this effort to create one Europe. And, uh, what happens if it doesn't? Well, we don't want to think about that because <laughs> I think the other side is far more likely. Uh, it's far more likely that they will get this will get this right. They have to change some things. They've got to they've got to fill up that financing vehicle so that financial markets will respect it, and the speculators will realize that they they can't win <laughs> <laughs> by betting against Italy and betting against uh, uh, Spain. Uh, once they understand that, then those spreads will come in, and uh, I think the debt issuance by Spain and Italy will be will be uh, within normal ranges, unlike the wide spreads we have today, which are very worrisome. Mm. Taking the economic data into consideration, people talk about uh, that U.S. is already in recession right now, um, but with the new normals that we need to adjust to that. Um, and also taking the European crisis into consideration, what is the impact going to be in the U.S.? Well, the U.S. isn't in recession. We're in, mm -hmm. in slow growth, maybe mm -hmm. one and a half, two, two percent. Uh, large parts of Europe are in recession, uh, and the concern is that all of Europe will go into a recession. Uh, the, Japan is slow growth, so you have the, the biggest single aggregate of economic activity, Europe, very slow. You have the United States very slow, and you have Japan very slow. That's half of the global economy. So the other half, of which Turkey fortunately is a part, the fast-growing economies, the BRICS. Turkey mm -hmm. really should mm -hmm. be a BRIC, mm -hmm. in my view, because it has those characteristics of a dynamic growth economy, creating jobs, and so on. Uh, we depend on, we the developed world, depend on the, the developing world, the emerging economies, to supply the growth that we can't supply. But now the worrisome thing is the developing countries, the emerging countries are beginning to slow down with slower growth rates in India mm -hmm. and in Germany and forecasts of slower growth rates in Turkey. Turkey too, yes. As well, mm -hmm. right. But being the 16th largest economy uh, in the world and sixth in the, among the Eurozone members, right. um, how do you view Turkey, especially taking the current account deficit into consideration, inflation right. into consideration, how the American investors view, how do you view Turkey? I view, I view Turkey as a triumph of good economic policy for the last decade, coming out of the crisis, mm -hmm. Uh, good economic policies being put in place with good leadership. It takes good leadership to put good economic policies in place. There are lots of universities around with lots of professors of economics who can tell you what you should do. But they don't get it done. It takes po inspired political leadership to put in place good economic policy, and that's what you have been blessed with in your country inspired political leadership that implemented good policy. And that good policy lies at the, the foundation of why Turkey has done so well. Uh, and I think it will continue to do well. Just look at the, the numbers, you know, the growth numbers from, from a decade ago. Look at the debt to GDP, the mm -hmm. deficits. Look at the inflation rates, interest rates. And all of those fundamentals, metrics of the economy are much better. Uh, at the same time, we have to recognize there are some risks. The current account 
deficit's a risk. The adequacy of foreign reserves is a risk. Inflation is a risk, but the biggest risk by far is, is the Eurozone and where, where it, it goes. Uh, I'm very confident about Turkey's future. We may have a period of slowing. Uh, it will clearly have some repercussions from the, the weakness we're seeing in Europe, but it'll get through that. As long as it adheres, as I'm confident it will, to the good policies, good economic policies, respect for capital, mm -hmm. uh, property rights, the rule of law, trade, capital flows, uh, and a focus on growth and jobs. I really admire your country's focus on jobs to create prosperity for the people and doing the things that allows that to happen in a way that preserves the fiscal integrity of the country. Hmm. Um, that was about Turkey. Thank you so much for your comments about Turkey. And I want to bring uh, to the U.S., which is going to be my last question. Um, you said there's no recession. People say there's a one-third uh, chance that we will go into recession in the U.S. We're talking about U.S. And also, they are very, um, they are not that optimistic about the uh, growth potential, especially if you take the $35 billion bill that didn't even pass the Congress last um, within the last mm -hmm. uh, couple of days, and also the $447 billion talking about jobs yeah. like you approached it. Where do, what do you want to see from the political leaders in the U.S. so that we do not have that probability, even the one-third right, right. probability of recession? Well, I, I don't think we'll have a recession, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think we'll have slow growth. Mm -hmm. um, and we're coming out of a, of a long period where we overconsumed and where, where the fundamentals of our economy weren't as sound as they should be with our huge current account deficit, with our, our huge uh, overconsumption, with our lack of savings, with our large deficits, and now we have to, we have, we're on the other side. We're correcting the mistakes of the past. The term they use is deleveraging, mm -hmm. you know, reducing consumption, increasing savings, which is something you talk about in Turkey. That's right. And, uh, this will be a, a, a long-term process. We're not going to fix the, what ails the American economy quickly. But what we could do is lighten up the burden of excessive regulation. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you see an uh, extraordinary amount of new regulations. Talk to business people, and they say the biggest barrier to our being, being out there hiring and investing is, is regulation. So I would call for clarification on regulation, reduce the, the onslaught of, of regulations. And I think the administration is beginning to say we'll do that. I think we should get the, the make, make the, the lower taxes uh, a permanent part of the American landscape, remove the uncertainty about taxes. I think we should implement the lower payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. that, that would be, be positive. Mm -hmm. And the super committee, which has been charged with coming up with plans to reduce the deficit, can do the American economy a huge favor and future generations a huge favor if they produce a plan to significantly reduce the out-year deficits. I think if they do that, we'll see the equity markets respond very strongly in the United States. Thank you so much for your old comments. Thank you for taking Thank you. Snow.